Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. We welcome you this morning, beloved brothers and sisters, lovely family, wherever you are joining us this morning in today's devotion, today being Wednesday, the 8th of March, 2023, we are grateful to God who has graciously granted us this privilege to start our day in his presence. So wherever you are joining this morning, please pay attention to what the Lord has set for you today. I'm very sure that the Lord will give you a word, a word of peace, a word that will lead you and make you have victory today. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning. We thank you again for the gift of your word particularly as we find in our daily devotional, the daily fountain. We ask that this morning again, you will give us your word. Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Let your word instruct us. Let your word direct us. Let your word build us. Let your word, King of Glory, that we are going to hear this morning, strengthen us and give us the grace as we continue on our journey from earth to heaven. Thank you, faithful Redeemer, because I'm very sure that as many of us that will partake of the instructions that you will give to us to obey them and to live by them, will be blessed. Be thou exalted. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. So you are all welcome. Uh, today the text before us is Leviticus 26. 1 to 21. Leviticus 26, 1 to 21. And the topic is wholehearted devotion towards God. Wholehearted devotion towards God. So join me as you pick your Bibles and let's read together the text before us. Leviticus 26, 1 to 21. Ye shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary, I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments and do them. Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will read evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, 
and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning urge that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your heart as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. This is the word of the Lord. As we've seen in Leviticus chapter 26, 1 to 21. And what we are considering this morning is for you and I, children of God, to have a wholehearted devotion towards God. The passage we just read, if you had followed critically, you'll be able to discern that it has about three parts. The first part is um, the warning against idolatry. How God in verses 1 and 2 announced to his children that he hates idolatry. God hates idolatry. Then when we go from verses 3 to about 13 there about, yes, to verse 13, we see God saying clearly that there is a reward, there are benefits if we obey him. And from verse 14 to the last verse we read in verse 21, we see God again saying that there, there is a judgment, there is punishment for disobedience, for devoting ourselves to idols. God punishes the sin of idolatry. So for me this morning, idols in a man's life or heart are hindrances to the wholehearted devotion one can have towards God. When there is an idol in your heart, that is occupying the space God ought to occupy, then it hinders you from having a wholehearted commitment to God. What is an idol? An idol is anything or anyone that takes the place of God in your heart. An idol can be a physical object. For example, a carved image. Uh, people can mold images even up till date. People can mold images, whether portable or large images, and they are bowing to it and they are carrying it about. It's the social media can be an idol to some people when we are glued to our gadgets, maybe the television or the phone, the iPad, and you give more attention, more time to it, so much that it eats your time of fellowship and intimacy with God. For some people, money, the pursuit of money has become their idol. They have lots and lots of excuses they give uh, for not serving God the, the way they ought to serve Him because they are busy pursuing money. For some others, it may be personalities, persons, celebrities, maybe in football or in 
the other, the Nollywood or other words. You have a person that has become your idol so much that you say, this one is my idol. And it's taking the place of God in your heart. You are following the person. You are knowing its transfers. You are knowing its moves. And you do not pay close attention to your work with God. In our day-to-day living, other things we give attention to could also be idols in our lives. To some people, it might even be their education, education career, education pursuit. Whereby today we see situations whereby people who have gone into the scientific world and are discovering things that God gave them grace to discover are even rejecting the God that gave them the wisdom and the ability to discover those things. And they are even coming boldly to say that there is no God. That they don't believe in God. That science is enough for them. For some, food, fashion, and even sleep could be an idol to some people. Whereby some of us now find it difficult to fast in a whole month, some even in a whole year, they can't genuinely fast and pray, seeking the face of God to grow them in their work with God. For some, they are busy chasing the latest fashion in town. They are consumed in it. For some, they are not faithful in their personal altars because of their love for sleep. When the Spirit of God is tapping you, waking you up night after night, morning after morning, to engage God in your quiet time, even your family altar, you, you love sleep more than getting close to God. So there are diverse things that are taking the place of God in people's heart today. And God is warning that if we do not read our hearts and our lives of these idols, His judgment, His punishment might come upon our lives. That is why we are bringing the word of God to you this morning. That there is a need for you to check your heart. Where are you in your walk with God? What are those things in your life? that are contesting the love and the place of God in your heart, in your day-to-day work with God? What are those things denying you intimate fellowship and relationship with your God? You know those things. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord bears witness to those things in your life. You can't say that you are not um, unaware of those issues God's Spirit keeps bringing into your life. You must check your life. God hates idolatry and wants us of the evil we bring on ourselves if we cherish any idol in our hearts and lives. Now, if we look at the passage again we read, verse 1 clearly shows us that there are different levels of idolatry. That verse 1 says, You shall make you no idols, nor graven image, Neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up an image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. There are personal idols. We see that in the first statement there. It says, you shall make you no idols nor graven image for yourselves. There are family idols. There are communal idols. And there are national and even international idols uh, that people and nations set aside. We have examples in scriptures when King Nebuchadnezzar had to raise a statue and commanded everyone to bow down to it. So there are different levels of idolatry people engage themselves in. If there is anyone you are involved in, whether personally or family or in your community or even in your land, God is speaking to you personally this morning and particularly this time to make sure that you free yourself from every form of idolatry so that you can serve your God with the whole of your heart. Furthermore, we see enumerated for us by God himself the blessings and rewards for anyone or people who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. If you now read the second part of uh, our reading this morning from verses 3 to 13, God took time to mention certain blessings, specific blessings 
specific favors that he releases unto those who are free from idolatry, who have taken him to be their God, and who are serving him wholeheartedly. If you look at verse 4, for instance, God was talking about lasting and enduring fruitfulness. Verse 5 speaks of safety and protection. Okay? Even in a time of evil, the time of so many forms of calamity, God promises safety and protection for his children. Verse 6 talks about peace, peace of mind, peace in your home, peace in the land. Verse 7 talks of victory over your enemies because God himself will take over your battle because your enemy becomes God's enemy. But woe betides me or woe betides you if God now becomes my enemy. Who will fight for me? If I join my hands with any idol, if I forsake God and God withdraws himself from me, who will then fight for me? But God's promises is that when we make him our God, Holy with the whole of our hearts. He will take over the battles of our lives. Verse 8 talks of divine strength for engaging spiritual warfare. God himself gives us strength. Verse 9 talks of favor with God. Such favor that distinguishes you from other people. Like what the Bible said about Noah. In the time when God came to destroy the whole world with flood. The Bible said, and this man Noah found favor with God, and he was spared along with his family. Verses 11 and 12 talks about God's ever-abiding presence. These are some of the blessings, some of the benefits, some of the rewards that God releases upon our lives when we give ourselves to him. On the other hand, God also reveals the pain and punishment that awaits those who allows other things to share his glory in their lives. Some of which includes, if you begin to read from verses 14 now, includes wasted efforts and wasted years. Terror, God said he will release terror upon those people. Diseases, sicknesses, defeat in battles of life, stagnation, struggles, disappointments, disgrace, all of these happens because when a man is idolatrous, he becomes an enemy of God. God himself will be against that person and actually withdraws his covering or hedge from your life. Brethren, as we conclude this morning, wholehearted devotion towards God is better achieved in the life of one who daily or continually examines his or her heart before God to be sure that his walk with God is cordial. That is how I define my own de devotion. If you ask me what does devotion really mean, it means a continuous search of your heart. It means testing your spirit, allowing the spirit of God to confirm with your own spirit that you are in tune with God, that you are walking with God, that your walk with God is cordial, that there is no atom of disobedience or rebellion in your spirit. In Galatians 5, the word of God said to us, it says, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the lusts, the desires of the flesh. Idolatry in a man's heart is part of the works of the flesh that robs a man of the glory of God, that robs a man of the favor of God. It might be that some of us have suffered so many calamities in life because we have cherished some idols in our hearts. So if we must be free from idolatry in any form, in any measure, we must keep examining our life. We must keep beaming the searchlight of God's word in our spirit to be sure that our lives are exposed to the light of God's word and we are living daily in accordance to the word of God, living daily in accordance to the instructions and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Our devotion to God is best measured by the quality of lives we live before God always, by the depth of our obedience and commitment to God at all times. I want you to pause again 
this morning, as the word of God is coming to your heart, what has been your commitment to God? How is your life before God? How honest are you? Are you living a life that is dishonest before God? Are there some level of disobedience that you have been manifesting towards the Spirit of God that God has used as a seal for your life? Have you been doing things your own way, ignoring the voice, the promptings of the Holy Spirit? What are those that have occupied your heart and it's as if you are paying more attention to them and you are losing your spiritual favor? This morning, God is calling you back. God is calling me back, calling us back as believers to our walk with him to a wholehearted devotion towards him, to a devotion that is, not, that, is, that is free from every form of uh, distractions, every form of abuse, but that we are wholly devoted to God. God on his own part is committed. He is devoted to our total well-being and our all-round fruitfulness and success in life. God is committed to you. He, the, he actually is the one that has given you life. He's the one that has brought you thus far. The Bible said that because of the love he had for us, he gave his son Jesus Christ to die for us. And he went on to say that if he could give us his only son, is there anything else that he will not do for us? And when you read the scriptures in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God says, I know the thoughts I'm thinking towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future, to bring you to an expected end. Beloved brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, brothers, wherever you are, I want to say to you that God is committed to your marriage. God is committed to your well-being, your total well-being, spirit, soul, and body. God is committed to your financial bliss. God is committed to your growth in ministry, to your growth in your service in the kingdom of God. He's committed to you. But one thing is the matter. Is your life free from all and any form of idolatry? Or are there some things that are still occupying the place? that God should occupy in your life. If you look at Jeremiah 31 verse 3, the scripture tells us that this love that God has for us is an everlasting love. I would like us this morning to repent and to turn to God with our whole heart so that even if there be anything we have lost in the past because of not being fully devoted to God by our repentance this morning, God will restore to us even those things we have lost. And I am praying that from this day henceforward, your walk with God will be cordial and you will continue to grow from strength to strength in serving this God and enjoying the blessedness that flows from a life that is intimate with Him. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Let us pray. Righteous Redeemer, we thank you you said in John chapter 15, verse 3, that we are already made clean by the word you have spoken to us. I believe that this word you've spoken to us this morning will cleanse us from every form of idolatry. The power of your word will break the stranglehold of any form of idolatry in our hearts, no matter how firm their grip has been over our lives. This morning, we receive grace from the throne of grace to be free from all forms of idolatry and we commit ourselves again to living for you and to serving you, to growing in intimacy in our fellowship and our relationship with you. Thank you, faithful Father, for in the coming days there will be testimonies of the blessedness, the, 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 the fruits that will abound to us because of this decision we have taken this morning.
to turn to you wholeheartedly. Blessed be your holy name. Be thou exalted as you lead us throughout this day to the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.